Hello and welcome to Parasha Express, the weekly fix for spiritual lessons taken from the Parasha. Grab your coffee and let's take a look at the weekly Torah reading. Today we'll be looking at Parasha Vayikra, which runs from Leviticus chapter 1 verse 1 to chapter 5 verse 26. Enjoy it and don't forget to give us your feedback on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube or via our website. They were waiting for them to start. As soon as the truck started moving, the protesters moved into view with their placards and started shouting slogans. Some even tried to take photos of the produce. Others have protested in supermarkets or outside butcher shops. These aren't the famous yellow vests of France arguing about fuel prices. These are vegan protesters arguing, sometimes violently, for the safety of animals. Gone are the days where eating meat was taken for granted or vegetarianism was a fringe phenomenon. Today, especially here in Berlin where I live, there are vegan burger bars, vegan Facebook groups, vegan t-shirts. Concern over animal welfare is something that millennials are very, very concerned about. Which brings us to this week's Torah portion. We're into some of the hardest, densest and toughest parts of the Chumash. And this week, God is speaking to Moshe Rabbeinu about sacrifice. Yes, that's right, blood, guts, gore. Actually, the exact opposite to veganism and animal welfare. This doesn't look like it's going to be easy reading. Actually, most of the book of Vayikra isn't easy reading to us moderns. God uses it to lay down the rules for our people back then in the wilderness. We'll come across passages concerning nocturnal emissions and skin diseases, what clothes we can wear, and when we can go on holiday. In these first five chapters or so, God details five different sacrifices that he requires his people to make on a regular basis. It's enough to make our stomachs churn. As we trawl through the opening chapters of Vayikra and read the exact instructions concerning these various different sacrifices, we can't help but be left with the thought, what on earth does this have to do with us today? Surely in a post-meat-eating world where more and more are eating tofu instead of steak, isn't this passage of the Bible irrelevant? If we start to dig a little below our superficial first impressions, we'll be surprised at what we find. First, we learn that each of our ancestors had to slaughter the animals themselves. That wasn't the priest's job, it was ours. We had to cover ourselves in the blood of the animal, see its face, hear its cries. And this wasn't just once in a blue moon, or a blood moon if you prefer the latest trend, this was every day and many times every day. Every time we messed up, every time we did something wrong, we had to kill an animal. And that's the second thing that we learn. Interacting with God is dangerous business. If we want to get close to God, we have to kill an animal. If we want him to forgive us, we have to kill an animal. If we want him to take away our guilt, we have to kill an animal. Why? Because God is perfect and we are not. Every time we messed up, in theory, we would have to die. God, in his ultimate perfection, cannot stand to look on imperfection, and so, under his laws, we deserve to die. However, because God is also merciful, he gives us an alternative to dying. We can bring an animal, a substitute, to die in our place. The picture and symbology is clear. The animal dies so that we don't have to. So, on and on, every day, our ancestors would be confronted with the fact that although they actually deserved to die, God has provided a substitute. Kind of like the story with Abraham and his son Isaac on the mountain. God provides a substitute. As we read through the pages of Vayikra, and not only this week's portion, but the whole book, we get the impression that God is not really keen on the idea of having us slaughter his creatures. He doesn't delight in animals dying, nor in us butchering them but he's willing to tolerate it because the alternative is more abominable to him. A complete extinction. Vayikra is really a training ground for our people. It's a preparation for the future and an introduction to who this God is. He is perfect, special and unique and not about to be tainted by our imperfections, mistakes and rebellion. So he institutes a system whereby we can interact with him without dying. We trade blood for blood animal blood for our blood. Gruesome and gory, but it's a solution, a temporary one. 
ultimately, God is not satisfied with animals being killed for our sake. But we were supposed to learn from this picture so that we would recognize another sacrifice thousands of years later. This time, it was one even more gruesome than slaughtered animals. It was the death of the Messiah, God's Son. As Yeshua was butchered on the cross, He died in our place. Indeed, He died in place of the whole human race. All of our wrongdoing, rebellion and hate had put Him there. God traded the blood of the Messiah for our blood. Now we can enter into a relationship with God again. Now He can change our lives and give us peace with each other because He's made peace between us and Him. Now we can be the people that He's intended us to be, all thanks to the Messiah Yeshua. Suddenly an over 3,000 year old text becomes relevant again. Suddenly we see that all of that blood and gore which we hate so much to read about was just a prelude to something much worse, the death of the Messiah foretold by the prophet Yeshayahu, Isaiah. Suddenly we see that our actions really do matter and that we need to be forgiven for many of them. Today we live in an age of animal welfare, an age of veganism and vegetarianism, an age of increased awareness. Thankfully, we no longer have to sacrifice animals like our ancestors had to, because the Messiah has already given himself in our place. Hard to swallow? But what if it's true? Wouldn't you like to meet the one who loved you enough to die in your place? That's it for this episode. We hope you enjoyed our parasha espresso. Please don't forget to subscribe to make sure you get the latest episodes. We'd love to hear from you, so please get in touch with us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or via our website at youthenfearjesus.de.